The public beta of DaVinci Resolve 20 has just been released. We'll tell you what's new and show you how it works. There will be on-screen text to indicate whether these features are included in the free version of Resolve or just the studio version. Here's our roundup of the new features in the Fusion page. The first feature is small but mighty. Previously, when creating Fusion compositions, frame numbers were determined by the source media. Now you can have Fusion use consistent frame numbering across all compositions. This setting is configured in Project Settings. There's a new tab called Fusion. If you'd prefer to use the old method for frame numbering, select this box. Otherwise, you can configure the default start frame using this control. For example, many commercial VFX workflows have VFX shots start at frame 1000. To demonstrate that this is working, we can head into Fusion. As you can see, instead of reporting the source clip's frame number, the first frame of this composition is 1000, matching the setting I entered in Project Settings. Having consistent frame numbering will help with things like shot replacement. It will even help when using features like referenced compositions. This next feature isn't exclusive to the Fusion page, but we are covering it in this video. It affects text nodes, whether it's being used on the Edit, Cut, or Fusion page. Do you find it difficult navigating through long lists of fonts looking for the one that you want? You can now create custom filters in Resolve that limit the fonts displayed in the Text Plus tool. You'll find this feature in User Preferences under Editing. Here it is. Create your filter as a text file. Put one font per line. You can use an asterisk as a wildcard to include variations of the same font. Once you've created your font filter list, save it, store it somewhere sensible, and select it back in Resolve's Preferences. Now, when I open the font dropdown in any Text Plus tools, you'll only see the fonts that match your filter. Fusion features a number of tools for working on virtual reality formats. Those nodes include Spherical Camera, Panomap, Latlong Patcher, and Spherical Stabilizer. These are all existing nodes, not new to version 20. What is new is the ability to work with 180 degree VR formats. A lot of VR formats are spherical. Apple's new immersive format that will soon be able to be edited directly in Resolve is a 180 degree VR format. The inclusion of forward facing VR formats into Fusion paves the way for editing immersive. Here's a quick demonstration. This clip is currently in a format known as lat long. I can use the pano map tool to convert it to 180 VR. I'll configure the input and set the output to 180 VR. Now we've got a 180 crop of the Source 360 material. I can use the rotation controls to choose which 180 degree hemisphere I'm keeping. Fusion has for some time featured a VR viewer mode. 180 has now been added to that. Click on the triple dot menu above the viewer, head to 360 view and choose the 180 VR option. Now, when holding down on Option or Alt and clicking and dragging with the middle mouse button, I can look around the 180 view. The Warper effect is available on the Edit, Color and Fusion page. Previously, it worked by creating reference points and then adjusting their position. There's a new way of controlling the Warper, Curves. Now, you can draw a reference line. The new Curves tool is particularly useful for adjusting long objects. In this instance, it makes it really intuitive to straighten this wall. I'm drawing my reference line to follow the curved wall. When you're done drawing, Warper tool will switch from Add mode to Adjust mode. In this mode, you can continue to refine your reference curve. Finally, switch the mode to Warp and you can now begin to warp your image. I can straighten the wall by straightening my initial reference curve. As you can see, the adjustment has revealed the edge of the image. I could zoom in to fix this issue. Alternatively, in advanced options, I can experiment with pin at corners and the around the edges option. It works great for subtle adjustments like this. Before we continue, can we show you where we find music for our videos? Most library music websites feature filters that allow you to search by mood, genre, and instrumentation. Even then, it can still be hard finding the right music for your edit. Audio has two incredible AI assistants that can help. First, Hans AI. Simply describe your video or describe the type of music you're looking for and Hans will suggest six tracks that might fit. Second, Link Match AI. It's common to take inspiration from commercial music. If you've heard a song you like, provide Link Match with a link so it can listen. It will search audio's own royalty-free library and suggest similar tracks that you can actually use. We love it when AI is used to enhance your creativity rather than replace it. Audio has a ton of other features you'll love, but we think your favorite feature will be the incredible price. 
using our discount code, you can get an entire year of audio for just $60. A big thank you to Audio for supporting our videos. Sometimes it can be hard to composite in the Fusion page as the viewers did not show color page adjustments. That's because the color page comes after the Fusion page in Resolve's order of operations. Let me demonstrate. Here's my setup. I've got a single clip in the timeline with a text plus clip on top. Now I can head to the Fusion page. Neither the color adjustment nor the text plus clip are available. Select the media out node. There's a new option called color grade. Select color and the Fusion viewer will show you the color page adjustments. Awesome, but wait, it gets even better. This third option, Mix, allows you to see the color page adjustments plus any compositing work done back in the edit page. So now I can even see the text plus clip too. So happy to see this feature added. Documents like PSDs and EXRs can contain different layers. Previously, it was possible to make adjustments to specific layers, but that required using a technique like this creating multiple media in nodes and using the layer dropdown to create separate pipelines for each layer. There are a number of improvements that make working with layers much better. I'm demonstrating with a PSD of the DaVinci Resolve logo. I've separated each element into its own layer. When a clip with multiple layers is loaded in Resolve, it will share its layers with any node that is connected downstream. When a node in that pipeline is selected, the viewer shows a dropdown menu that allows you to choose which layer you are viewing. By default, a merged copy of all the layers is shown. By selecting other options, I can preview individual layers. As mentioned, layers are passed on to any nodes that are connected downstream. To demonstrate, I'll add a Gaussian blur node. At the moment, it is blurring the entire composited image. In the settings tab, this drop down here allows me to change which layers this node affects. I could select a single layer, but by selecting custom, I can choose more than one layer. I'll select the red, yellow, and blue petals of the logo. Now the blur is only being applied to them. You'll notice though that I don't see the blur in the viewer on the right, which is monitoring the media out node. That's because like all other nodes in this pipeline, by default, it sees and operates on the composite of the image. To see those changes, I need to deliberately recomposite the layers back together. Just before I do that, to prove to you that those changes are there, if I go to the settings tab in the media out node, there's a drop down called input layer. If I select the red layer, check that out. That blur is being sent downstream. It's just not a part of that default composite. Let's put that back to auto. As mentioned, we need to recompose the adjusted layers of this image back together. There's several ways to do this. We like using a multi-merge node. I'll add one. The Gaussian blur node is connected to the multi-merge's background input. Head to settings and we'll change the background input to use just the background layer. This has been reflected in the viewer on the right. As there are five other layers, I shall connect the Gaussian Blur node to the multi-merge an additional five times, once for each layer. If you're familiar with the multi-merge node, you might have spotted something new. There's an additional option here that allows you to select which source layer each layer uses. Sorry I'm saying layer so much. I can link each of these layers in my multi-merge to a separate layer in my source. And there you go. The image has been recomposited, but this time with the changes I made to those individual layers. I could also change things like the blend modes and opacity too. Now, I know this takes some effort to set up, but the advantage is that it's now much easier to add nodes upstream that make changes to individual layers. For example, I'll add a color correction node, set it to affect just the red layer, and use the hue control to manipulate it. And voila, thanks to the multi-merge node I've already set up, that change is now being composited into my final image. In the future, we'd love to see a special node or a macro that makes it simpler to recomposite adjusted layers. Multi-layer pipelines also work with EXRs, it's common for VFX renders to contain different passes like specular, diffuse, and so forth, like this file. You can see that it has many layers. Those layers can now be accessed in a single pipeline. Multi-layer pipelines presently support both PSDs and EXRs. There's more to explore here in future videos. If deep compositing is new to you, here's a simple explanation. Deep renders carry an extra channel that gives you depth information about the scene. 
This allows your compositing program to understand if a pixel is showing an object that's close to the camera or a distant object. Resolve now has native tools for accessing that deep data. A big thank you to Charles for providing these sample EXRs that I'm demonstrating with. He's the VFX supervisor at the excellent ArtFX School of Digital Arts. There's a link in the description if you'd like to learn more. I'll equip the media in node in the left-hand viewer. At the moment, the viewer is showing us the color channels. I can see this image has deep data. When I hover the cursor over it, the status bar at the bottom shows me the R, G, B, A, and Z values for each pixel. Let me give you an example of what we can do with deep data. First, I need to add a deep to image node to convert our image into something that can be connected to a regular node like media out. All the deep tools should be used before the deep to image conversion. All the normal tools should be used after the deep to image conversion. Using the decrop node, I can isolate the foreground statue by cropping the image using depth data. I'm cropping everything out of the image with a Z value greater than 500, give or take. Let's delete that and show you another example. Depth data can be used as a mask to drive 2D effects. When I hover the mouse over the image, you can see Z values run from around 500 to 1800. As every 3D render is different, Z values will vary from render to render. Either way, alpha values only vary between 0 and 1. So if we are to use these Z values to drive an effect mask, they must be normalized between 0 and 1. An easy way to do that is with a custom tool. It's a really versatile node that allows you to run mathematical operations on images channels. On the channels tab, open the AUX channel expressions. You can see that Z1 represents the Z channel input of this node. I don't actually want to edit the Z channel. I just wanted to show you where that control was. I want to edit the alpha channel. It's up here. If I were to simply type Z1 in here, the Z value for each pixel would be copied over to the alpha channel. Remember though that I want my alpha channel to run from 0 to 1, not 0 to 1800. This isn't a custom tool tutorial, so I'm going to move quickly with the maths. On the controls page are controls that we can use to set variables in our expressions. I'll use the first two number in screw controls to set the minimum and maximum Z values that we expect to see in this image. Remember, I set it ran from around 500 to 1800. Those will be my values. Back in the channels page, I can reference those values in my expression for the alpha channel. Z1 minus N1, all in brackets, divided by N2 minus N1, all in brackets. There you go, those Z values have been normalized and inserted into the image's alpha channel. If I now change my viewer to show alpha, you can see that the Z channel has been successfully clamped from 0 to 1 and is now driving the alpha channel. So cool. Thanks to the custom tool and DaVinci's new deep compositing toolset, I have now turned that Z channel into an alpha channel that I can use as an effect mask. I'll create a color corrector node and attach the custom tool to its mask input. And look at this, I can turn the lights down in the back of the room. By tweaking the N1 and N2 values in the custom tool, I can make the lighting change more aggressive. These values make the light fall off sooner in the scene. We're just scratching the surface. There's so much more you can do with Fusion's new deep compositing tool set. That was just one example. There's one more tool that compositors will find helpful. Resolve now has native CryptoMat support. Here's that same EXR from Charles. I'll connect it to the new CryptoMat node. This EXR is pretty simple. Everything is made from the same material, so nothing shows when I'm in material mode. But if I switch it to show me objects, now you'll see that every single statue shows in its own color. Using the picker, I can add statues to the selected mat list. By enabling output to alpha, these mats will now be outputted as usable alpha that can be connected to the effects mask input of other nodes. For example, I'll use another color corrector node and connect the crypto mat node to its effect mask input. I'll make an adjustment to the color wheel. And you can see that it's only affecting the statues that I selected in the crypto map node. Here's some other various new features. There's a new light for 3D work, the dome light tool. The text plus node now supports wrapping. We've been waiting for that one for a while. That's demonstrated in our edit page update video. Now all we need is a spell checker. And finally, there's a new multi-text node. We demonstrated that in the edit page video too. 
it's also available in the Fusion page. There's so many incredible improvements. And the cost? Absolutely nothing. Yes, some of these features require a studio license, but there's no additional fee that you need to pay to upgrade to version 20. With everything that has been added, it's worth asking, are you still using another editing program like Premiere, Avid, or Final Cut Pro? What are you waiting for? Come give Resolve a try. If you're looking for a guide to help you transition your existing skill set, please follow the link in the description to learn more about our course and get a discount. The DaVinci Resolve version 20 public beta is available to download now. Don't forget this is a beta. These features will change and improve. These are just some of the features on the Fusion page. Go watch our three other videos to learn what's new on the other pages. Other educators like Casey Ferris, Darren Roston, Mr. Alex Tech, and Patrick Sterling will have their own videos out about version 20. We'll put links in the description. Please go watch their videos as I'm sure that they will cover stuff that we've missed. A big thanks to Audio for sponsoring this video. Supporting our sponsors is an excellent way of supporting our channel. Give the video a like, share it with your fellow colorists, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching.